<laughs> I'm Bobby Bandiera, and you are listening to the PBR broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> there it is. All right, let's get this ball rolling. You let's ready? Go. Yes. Here we go. What's up, everybody? PBR Podcast, Mike Polano, Derek D, and we have a very special guest. We're back in the Speakeasy Studios, Mr. Bobby Bandiera. That's what I'm yeah, talking about. He brought us a guitar. Mike, Derek, and Frankie's here, too. Frankie's here. Frankie's and here. who was playing that music that we just heard? Is that a local band doing that? Uh, that is a friend of ours. It used to be a band called Chapter 5. Yeah, uh, cool. His name's Chris Ippolito. Nice. Very um, nice. You sounded, like it? Sounded good, yeah. He's a Red Bank guy. Yeah, I don't know who he is, but yeah, I'm... Sounded good. Tell him. Tell nah, him. Hey, it sounded pretty good, brother. <laughs> yeah. And that was his wife uh, on the on the vocals. Is that right? Cool. Bobby right. Bobby Bandieri, man. That is a, a a Jersey Shore legend and all over the place legend. But hey. around here, you are known. Uh, you know, I'm old, so <laughs> and these days people are calling me Santa Claus because my my it, beard and my gray hair. But you know, I'm still kicking. And you're originally from? I'm from Orange originally. Orange. Orange. North Jersey. North Jersey. Boy, yeah. You Orange, probably know some Orange. of my family members. West oh, Orange. here we go, Bob. He's probably, right. right? The whole family grew up up there. <laughs> Is that right? Everybody go to Libretti's in, uh, <laughs> on the borderline of, of Orange what? and uh, West Orange? No, they went to like Nutley High School and uh, okay. Bloomfield. Uh, 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 no uh, any D'Angelis's what was, or anything? What was the restaurant in the park? Uh, Nanine's. Oh, Nanina's in the park. Yeah, Nanina's my buddy owns that now. Is that right? Yeah, Is my buddy right? Joey Coochie. He used to go down there every. Hey, now Joey Coochie over here owns that place. I don't know. You can't. I don't think you could say Coochie. No, his last name's Coochie. <laughs> See, if it's a last name, it's totally cool. It's totally cool. Okay. You want to hear a quick funny story, Bobby? He's engaged, right? His yeah. fiance. This is no joke. One hundred percent true. Yeah. His fiance. Her name is Anya. Her name will be Anya Coochie. Anya Coochie. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's. Terrible, and man. And she's owning it and going with it and uh, more power to her. Lordy, lordy, lordy. How great is that? Why can't why can't that happen to me? <laughs> well, I get a girlfriend and she sticks around for two weeks and she's gone. What do you, what's the matter? What happened? Nobody oh, wants man. a girlfriend named Anya Kuchi, though. <laughs> Come on, Anya's a, she's a smoke. Uh, Bobby, <laughs> a, a lot of people might know you from uh, playing with Bon Jovi and Bruce Springsteen, Southside Johnny, all these like huge bands. But before we get to all that. Yeah, I just want to say to her, don't. Say to him, don't get any on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I had to get that out. Before well we done. get to all that, I want to kind of go back, man, to kind of the beginning. Because you're you're in your teens in in what, like the, the 50s? <laughs> right? I, I mean, was, music's totally different. I was born in, I was born in uh, 53. 53. So yeah. when you're hitting your wheelhouse, so, when did you start to play the guitar up in uh, Orange Jersey? It, it, you know, it's, it's the, the age-old story. Uh, watching Ed Sullivan. You guys know... Yeah. Yes. I mean, I, I was never watched no, it live. I know what you're yeah. talking about. You've had yeah. to see the the, the videos, so, you know. Um, it was a great su- Sunday night family show. Uh, so any anybody who was ever on the show wasn't allowed to say uh, a lyric in their song that was stepping over the line. Uh, the Stones were on, and and it was uh, let's spend the night together. Uh, I need you guys to sing. Let's spend some time together. We can't have that going out on the air. Yeah. From our show, let's spend the night together. What? And then the biggest one was Doors. Uh, the Doors, correct? Yeah. Uh, Touch me. Uh, what was it in that? Or was it? Uh, no, it's light uh, my fire. It's higher. Yes. Get, light get, my oh, fire. Yeah, yeah. get much higher. That's right. famous in the movie, right? Yeah. Yes, that's right. It was light my fire. <laughs> Apparently, they were they're trying to. Uh, Break it to, to Jim Morrison backstage. You can't sing that. What would you like me to sing? Bite my wire. Yeah. <laughs> now I don't sing that either. And he like anyway, really so, emphasized it when he said it yeah, too. Yeah, big time. Anyway, uh, yes, watching TV at uh, ten, eleven, uh, after coming home from a procession, and uh, that was rounding the block with the Blessed Virgin Mary and. And the rest of the congregation in, in, a, in a Catholic grammar school where I went in Orange, Mount Carmel, uh, get home in time to, to see the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. Do you remember seeing it live, huh? Wow. Yeah, the Beatles on Ed Sullivan. It was it was fabulous. It was as ex- exciting watching it in the living room. Well, not quite as being there, but it really felt 
like you were there. It was live, you know. Uh, yeah. And it was really, really exciting. And and I remember telling to my mother and saying, you know, uh, I love the that those those candy cakes that the British make. <laughs> what are you talking the Jaffa about? Cakes. <laughs> Jaffa cakes. What are you talking about? I said, no, no, no. Seriously, Ma, I want to play guitar, and that's all I want to do. I just figured it out. I'm 10 years old, 11 years old. No, that's you're not doing that. You know what I want you to do. You're going to be a doctor or a lawyer. I said, no, nah, I don't think so. Did you get a guitar so, young? So shortly thereafter, which, you know, wasn't that shortly thereafter. I'm 10 or 11, and I didn't get my first guitar till 13. So it was about two years later. But they did. They they, they went out, and they, they spent their hard-earned money on but you, getting were, me a guitar. Were you, were you one of those kids that, like, you got that guitar, and you would come home from school, you're playing that guitar? I'm telling was, you Was guys, it like that? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Come on, man. We're, we're, we're you know, we're going to play baseball. We're going to play basketball, and we're going to do something in the way of sports. And I'm like... I'm staying home, guys. I'm sorry. See, that's... I'm sorry. That's awesome. Because that's... Was, it was you dedication. Knew. Yeah, I did. It is. I felt it, you know. And it's a good thing that, that uh, somebody should be that uh, enamored with anything you yeah. know, that's going to... At that age. Right. That's going to be... You're going to have that kind of passion with for the rest of your life. Yeah. My, and and uh, till this day, I'm 190 now. <laughs> you look great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think, Frankie? <clears throat> Yeah. Bob, like, Bob like, what uh, <laughs> what your parents? They obviously like to support it. You know, they bought you the guitar. What uh, what did your parents do? My dad was uh, he worked for an oil company, and he used to pump oil in the, in into the basements of people's houses for for winter time, and and in the in the off months, he would he was an oil burner mechanic. My brother followed in his shoes, although we he was playing drums when I started playing. At 13, he was two years older, 15, and we'd be in the basement knocking the plaster off the ceiling. Uh, my mother was a secretary, so they did not make a lot of money. I mean, you know, and they scraped, scrimped, and and and, and saved to, to to buy me my first guitar. God bless them both. And they so God they supported them. it because they they bought your I guess your brother a drum set. Or yes, did you... and they bought him a, a drum set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> where where did their uh, are they first generation? Did they come here? They they are my grandparents were both sides were from Italy and both my parents were born here. My mother was from Brockton, Massachusetts. My father was from Jersey City. How'd they meet? Yeah, uh, <laughs> oddly enough, and I I don't know why I remember the story anyway, but uh, apparently at a funeral parlor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, every uh, was, every door that closes, another one opens. There you go. <laughs> there so. you go. Uh, oh God, Viola, have have you ever been here before to a funeral parlor? <laughs> oh yeah, you're right. Sorry, because I'm I'm in love with you, and I just need to tell you. All right, well we'll see where it goes from here, and then here we are, me and my brother, years later, and and there it went. Do they did they have like a big musical influence? When I grew up, my parents, my uncle was a, an elegant, which was like a fifty. Do he, they sang Little Star? Oh wow! Um, oh, Nino, he was in the elegant. Yeah, Nino Nino he Mata. Was? Yeah, he oh, is, they still wow. tour. He's still in it. Yeah. There you are, little star. Yeah. Where are you? Yeah. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Twinkle, twinkle, star. That's great. I love he just goes right in on Wish I could, wish I might make this dream come true. Which one uh, was he? With? He's Nino Mato. He was uh, the, the high, high pitch. The high singer? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh, Vito was, that uh, is very Vito cool. was in the band. He was in uh, G- Goodfellas and a bunch of movies. Okay. He had the glass eye. Yeah, uh, yeah, Vito, yeah. I forget his last name. Okay. And, um, but it wasn't, uh, 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 what's his name? Uh, I want to say it was Pacone, but Vito Pacone, but I, I don't no, know. No, I'm thinking, of, I'm just trying to make a joke and be funny. He's one of the Rat Pack guys. Oh, yeah, side. yeah. And he he, uh, he converted to Judaism. Uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, oh, oh, Sammy Davis Sammy Jr. Davis oh, Sammy Davis Jr. <laughs> Glass Jesu, Eye. Jesu Christ. <laughs> He wouldn't understand that either. But uh, yes, yes, yes. So there, but there was I, always like music yeah, playing in, in the uh, in the house. You know, oh in my, my house. God. Is that what it was like? Nah, no, no, no. Ne- neither one of them played music. My father had a tin ear. He couldn't hold a tune to save his life. My mother loved to sing, and uh, uh, after a few years, there was a Hammond organ in the living room. She was learning how to play it, and as she was getting lessons, I'm sneaking in there to play it. And after a month and a half, she's. 
how do you know how to play that already? And I'm still taking lessons. I said, I don't know, Ma. I'm good, I just, Ma. I just got it, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's got yeah. what it takes. Sorry, baby. It, it's so funny because that's so similar to like my, not, like my dad and my uncle. They, my grandparents, they didn't play any instruments, but my, um, my dad played guitar. Yeah. Got it young, was was obsessed. Yeah, and he moved yeah. to bass, and my cool. uncle John, his brother, played drums. Yeah, yeah. And they were in bands they all the time. Bands. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. If, just I need to ask for my dad. Did you ever hear of the band Blue Stone or uh, no. the Marvels? The Marvels I have. <laughs> my dad was in the Marvels, oh, and then wow. he was in Blue Stone. And the, the pictures you see, like, it looks like Buddy Holly and everything. Yeah. A couple yeah, years yeah. later, hair down yeah. to here. Now it's yeah. the '60s. I used to prowl around as a teenager with uh, the the, the Machochis. Uh, their dad was Nick, uh, shortened his name, from Machochi, Machochi to Massey, and he was the bass player in the Four Seasons. Oh, yeah, yeah. And going to his house at 14 and 15 with my guitar, sitting around with uh, Nick uh, Massey, he, he would always say to me, he says, You're, how old are you? I said, I'm 16. He says, he says you stick with it. He says, I, I could hear it already. Yeah. Something's happening with you. I said... And I'm still waiting. I'm 62. When is it going to happen? Uh, it's happened. When is it going to happen? Oh, it's happened. Uh, you know. the, funny thing, the funny thing, you mentioned the Four Seasons. <laughs> it happened already. I <laughs> You're in right, it. You're living it. It went right past me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my, uh, the, the Four Seasons, my, my great aunts and my grandparents, my grandmother yeah. were friends with Frankie Valley and all those guys. Oh my God, and yeah. and, yeah, and uh, yeah. I have one great aunt left, and they took her to see Jersey Boys years ago. Yeah. And uh, it was so funny because she would... She was watching, and she's like, oh, no, no, that didn't happen like this. I was there. I was with Tom Mooch, and I was with all these guys. That's funny. And she, like, said what was right and what was wrong. Yeah. And yeah. It's so cool to pick her brain. Yeah, they, about they it try and, and get it as close as they can. And, and you know, when you, when you, you actually sit in a room with somebody who's there, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, welcome, the truth comes out. <laughs> but I didn't see the, the, the uh, play, and I heard it was absolutely fantastic. And the movie's great, yeah, too. The it. movie I did see, and it was so, it was so much fun to see. Yeah. Because I was... Shortly thereafter, that that era. Mm -hmm. So I, I I remember a lot of the places that in the movie, that, you know, where where that yeah. was and the streets they were on and the, the cars that they were driving back then. It was it was a lot of fun. Lot of fun so see. your mom your mom was taking uh, to go back to the, your family the the organ. So you really got your I guess maybe you got your influence from her. Right, yet from she didn't mom. have the musical talent that you had and your brother had, right? No, 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 no. But yeah, she definitely had. Uh, 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 the, the the better ear for music as far as my mom and dad were concerned, um, but nobody else played. My grand I remember my grandfather playing accordion when I was a kid, but it wasn't like uh, he had one under his bed. You know, I, I somebody had stopped by with one and oh give me that. I, I used to play this thing, <laughs> right, and right. he'd pick it up and I'd start dancing around at five six years old. I do remember that. Uh, it's hard to remember anything past t 10 years or so. But anyway, uh, no, no, yeah. Uh, so if it wasn't my mom. It was my grandfather who, who had any musical influence at all. Frank, Frank Pache. Frank Pace was his name. They used to call him Cheech. Pache. Uh, pa I don't remember what that meant, Pache. My name, my last name in Italian means flag. Okay. Bandiera. Bandiera. And most people argue that it's not even Italian. It might be Portuguese. <laughs> Whatever. You're like, I'm from North Jersey. It's Italian. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Whatever, Frankie. <laughs> Frankie hey, over here. What are you doing over there, Frankie? You... Taking notes. You're taking notes? Yeah. Producing. Show notes. What are you doing? Watching uh, 30 pictures on the computer there? <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter over there? <laughs> so when did, you, when did you start to step out? So you, you're playing with your brother in the basement, and then at what point? Okay, so um, here we are. Learning how to play, my brother and myself, uh, and lo and behold, there's another guy across town. Let's get together with that guy, and it'll be two guitars and drums at that point. We got to find a bass player. So the the guy, I I found it's always dad. the case, right? You got to find a bass. <laughs> bass I wish you found my dad. Yeah, you go. <laughs> so it, it, it seemed that it was always the last guy you, you found was the bass player. Uh, in any case. Uh, here we are playing as a, a three-piece band in the basement, in the backyard. The, the mothers and fathers, oh, aren't they cute? Aren't they, aren't they good? Aren't they good? We weren't good. <laughs> we weren't good. Then the guy we were taking guitar lessons from uh, said, you know what? Just so you kids get off the ground with what you're doing, I'm going to play bass. And he was maybe five or six years older than us. So he wasn't, you know, 
that that much older. But uh, uh, he, he stepped in, and we had a band. We had a band. It was my mother named us. Uh, what was, was what uh, was the name of the band? I'm afraid to tell you. Come on, it was the Tiffany Tide. The Tiffany uh, Tide. Uh, Where does that come from? You were in the basement. You saw a thing of Tide. Yes, that's probably what happened. <laughs> my mom. What do you think of the Tiffany Tide? And we're like, nah. We're thinking more like the the Dirty Rats or something. <laughs> no, you, you can't do that. You want people to respect you. <laughs> I've been trying all my life now too. <laughs> anyway, yeah, the <laughs> Tiffany Tide. Then we got a keyboard player. And now we're uh, a five-piece band, and the, the lot of us sang. The, the, my brother didn't sing, the drummer, and the keyboard player didn't sing. So guitar, two guitar players and the bass player did sing. And we were doing all the stuff they were playing on the radio back then. Uh, and I got a DeVita, the oh, nice Iron song. Butterfly, mm -hmm. and, and we were doing a bunch of Beatles stuff and some Rolling Stones Can you stuff. rip in the, in the God of Vita right now? Oh, hell you yes. Got <laughs> <laughs> Gotta the Vita, baby. Don't you know that I love you? Oh, won't you come with me? I, I remember it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it was awesome. true, true story that they forgot the words, like, and that's how it became in a God of the Vita. You know, I'm not sure, but yeah, I think that was the the story. Like the Nana -na song, right? Hey, hey, goodbye. <laughs> oh, right. They forgot the words, <laughs> and they got up on right? stage, and they sang Nana. Really? Na -na. Yeah. The that, rest is history. 60%. That's funny. <laughs> uh, a, a friend of mine two towns away was a drummer, and they had lost their drummer. That band, what's the name of that band? Na 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 hey, goodbye. <sighs> Anyway, the coasters? No. no, 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 no. It was after way after that. But uh, um, they said uh, we need to know that you play double bass drums. He said, "Oh yeah, I play double bass drums." All right, and he got in the band because uh, their drummer had left or something happened uh, with his health. Anyway, uh, I had to do that song at one of the tribute shows that I do at the Count Basie Theater, mm. which I do have one coming up uh, in April. Uh, in any case. Uh, Everybody learns a song. I want everybody to learn it. You get to rehearsal, and you, you, we start to put it together, what you learned. If you did your homework. If they didn't do their homework, I fired them on the spot. <laughs> anyway. Did uh, you really? Well, there have been some. I like that. Hey, man, there have it, been a couple. Hey, I, I appreciate that. There have been a couple. Uh, thank God it was only one or two. <laughs> so a guy would come in, and you'd be like, you're not prepared. Oh, my God. You have no idea. And I'm a nice guy. How would you, would you do it nicely? You're a very laid back I'm, guy. I'm a nice guy. This one girl, uh, she had... Well, let me let me finish this story. <laughs> oh, what was the name of that band? Uh, anyway, one of the guys says, "What what is that that goes on in the background of that song? It sounds like a... In Na Na Hey Hey Goodbye. I said, that's a double bass drum. Oh my God, it is a double bass drum. And they were all, you know, couldn't figure out what was doing that, what right. was happening back there in the background. And it was the drums. Yeah. But I know that because of my friend who couldn't get in the band at the time unless he played double bass drums. Yeah. Or else I, I would have been there too. What the hell is doing that back there? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the, the, the other question was he, 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 we wanted to go. Uh, Oh, me firing somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, I usually put a show together two months ahead, at, you know, when I do a tribute show. I'm, and mostly at the Basie. I've been doing them at the State Theater in New Brunswick, too. I got one coming up in March, the, another one at the Basie coming up in April. It was going to be Roy Orbison, which I would it would have been the third time around. Mm -hmm. uh, and since David Bowie died, can you, can you make it a David Bowie I said, yeah, of course. Let's make it a David Bowie show. So it's going to be a David Bowie uh, show. But that's so awesome where you could just make it that. Like, you know the songs, you have the songs. In and, your... and, you know, <laughs> because when, when you make music your thing, and, and like I said, I was so passionate at 13 wanting to be a musician and sing and, and jump up and down on stage, you know. And, you know, of course it's the girls. You, the girls are looking at you. But, but it was more they than that. They always say. Hey, it say. was more than that for me. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was just so cool to sing and play. Anyway... Uh, the the discs get made. I, I mail them out to everybody uh, two months ahead of time with all the songs that we're gonna do at that tribute show. And one of the girls, we're we're we're, two, we're through two two songs at this point. 
at the beginning of rehearsal, and she's having a hard time. And I and she's a singer. And she's a singer. Okay. Right? I'm not going to say anybody's names. No, no, no. I was just saying I wasn't. Was she yeah. playing an instrument yeah. or? It, it wasn't uh, Debbie Harry or any of those people. <laughs> <laughs> she's. Ha, did you ever play with her? Because she's this, local too. Right? This past uh, Christmas show at the Basie, December 23rd, I had my fundraiser at the at the account Basie, the Hope Show we call it, mm-hmm. and th- we do a benefit raise money to raise money for. This year it was the VNA, the Visiting Nurse Association. Uh, Mary's Place, uh, a breast cancer hospice in, in Ocean Grove. Mm. And uh, what was the other one? Uh, anyway, uh, she she was great. And she came, she sang. It was great. Did one way or another, and she did a Christmas song. Nice. Great. She was great. Anyway, getting back to the, the fire, firing. firing. <laughs> 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 I said, darling, I said, we're only two songs in. We got... At least three and, and three hours and forty five minutes left of rehearsal, and we can't get past the third song. I said, "Did you listen to the disc? Did you learn? Did you do your homework?" Uh, yeah, I, I listened to it. All right, well, let's try this song again. I had to stop the song. I said, "Oh, darling." I said, "What? What? Well, I'm learning it now." Uh. I was like, "Oh, geez, oh, geez." So I let her do the show. I let her do the show, and that was the last time I used her. But it's it's not it's not good. Next, no, next you time you gotta be professional. Next time you need Come to on. fire somebody, we we Come have on. a friend that usually comes on the show. Uh, yeah. He's actually running for president. His, his name's Donald Trump. Uh, <laughs> Don, if you had to fire this singer, we, we don't we don't know her name. We we can just call we'll call her Frankie. How would you do yeah. it on stage? Listen, darling, let me tell you something. You you're fired. Your voice sounds like crap. Trump's gonna sing. Trump. Would, would you t- <laughs> Trump sixteen? Would you tell her she sounds like Rubio? Oh Jesus! <laughs> you sound like Marco Rubio. Listen, I'd build a bandy area, <laughs> and I'd be like, "You go over there for now. Get out of the bandy area." Yeah, get out of the bandy area. <laughs> Was uh, Donald Trump? Everybody wrote, wrote nice. for Donald. 2016. It's gonna be huge. Oh, you know what's also great is uh, Donald Trump can sing trouble. blondies one way or the other. Is that right? Yeah. Why don't we try that out real quick? <laughs> you ready, Daddy? Come on. Hundred <laughs> percent. Or another, you're gonna find ya. I'm gonna get you, get you, get you, get you one way. Or you're fired. I'm gonna get you. That's all I sing. That's worth a million dollars, Trump. That's Trump it. 16, everybody. You don't like it? Uh, you're fired. Uh, yeah, get out. Get out. Oh, that's great. It'll be a great wall. That's our next president singing Blondie with Bobby B. We're in trouble. <laughs> anyway, you shake a stick at it. Um, you brought up um, David Bowie. Was he was he an influence on you? Um, yes and no. Um, I, I, I wasn't putting it together in the beginning with all the glam stuff. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I, I actually decided I was going to listen to the songs he was writing. And I was like, this is That's really what a great. lot of people say yeah. when they go really back. Really great. And- you know, he had some great songs. I mean, you know, not just the... Ground can, ground can... It's a major tom. Commencing countdown engine zone. Check ignition. Yeah, that was the right note. I love how you can go. You can just go into. I know. Song. Like, I want to be able to do that. Well, so bad. You know, it, I guess I could have. I tried practice for since years. Thirteen. It's a long time since <laughs> I've been doing this. So hey, you know. All right. So you're cross town with your brother. He's on the drums. You had another guy. You have a, an older bass player. Yes. And what? And and were the were the tide the the what tide the Tiffany Tide the Tiffany, the Tiffany Tide, tide. Tiffany yeah. tide. And, and what happens? You're still in the oranges. You start still to play out. And and uh, my father. You know, he, he, he's helping as much as he could. He had a van. Uh, I'm going to get you guys some gigs. Don't worry. You're your manager now. <laughs> right. My father's our manager. I love it. I said, all right, Phil, let's see what, <laughs> where you're going to get us now. And we did. We got a couple of high school dances. Nice. And we got paid. It was probably 20, $20 a guy. Uh, and then there were a few of those over the, the, the first year, year and a half. And then we started getting uh, college dances. So we started getting more money. Uh, and then we did a few of those. Playing covers or originals? Playing covers. What Playing was your covers. what was the number one cover Probably that you Beatles always had to play? Stone stuff. Oh my God. You know, uh, Hey Jude, don't make it bad. It was a big song. Yeah. And the God of Vita was in there. Uh, uh, you had to play fast and slow, right? She's got it, a ticket to ride. Nah, Is that yeah, a good one? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, another one, 
we were in the back, still in the backyard at this point, before any gig was. Uh, hey, who's that? Who's that I see walking through these woods? Bob Dylan. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. It looks like Little Red Riding Hood. Hey there, Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Who sang that? Sh Sam the Sham and the Pharaohs. He was this guy, played keyboard, and he had a turban, and he was just an odd-looking character. And he did have a couple of hit records. What was his other one? Uh, uh, Wooly Bully. Oh, Wooly oh, Bully. Yeah. <laughs> what a great... Yeah. That's another one of those songs, like, what's a Wooly Bully? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you just got to make it make it rhyme. Still, yeah. still, we're still wondering what a wooly bully is. Yeah, but see, the cool thing about that is, and not to talk about, but my I, I, these stories just remind me of my dad telling Derek me D. Com, everybody. Derek D. Everybody, Com, right? <laughs> That's me. Um, but no, like back then, there wasn't DJs. When you had a band at high school dances, you had a band yeah. at college yeah. dances, oh, yeah. and that's like what my that's like what my dad's band did. They were making a living off just playing, yeah, yeah. Uh, college shows mostly Good. all through college and all that stuff. You know, so. Uh, um, 13, I started playing. 16 comes around. I move into a neighborhood. There's a, a keyboard player from a band called Home. Home, the, the uh, yeah. They, uh, DJs. They're yep. DJs. And they, you know, we were, they were already established. Their guitar player was leaving. I'm 16. I was only playing for three years, but my neighbor was the keyboard player, Vincent. And uh, he says to these guys, who cares that Numb Nuts is leaving? I got a guy, believe me. I'm telling you. I got a guy. I got a well, kid. Well, where is he? <laughs> he, he's, he lives right next door to me. Well, is, is he our age? They, they were like five years older than me. So they were 21 at this point. Yeah. No, he's 16. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How good could he be? You're going to see. You're going to see. So I went to the first rehearsal. And I think my first song playing was like a... <laughs> Something in the way. Right? And, and those guys were like... Wow, he he knew every nuance of the song, and he sang it. Uh, yes, he's, he could be in the band. <laughs> so great. at 16 years old, I'm starting to play New Jersey clubs. At that point in time, you could work literally seven nights a week if you wanted to, playing clubs. And there were there were a bunch of bands. Uh, cover bands were really the, the thing yeah, at the yeah. time. You could seven nights a week. 16 years old. By the time I'm 17 years old, I am I am working seven nights a and week. And you're still in high school I at the time. I quit high school. Oh, My mother quit? was fit to be tied. <laughs> you, 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 no, no. No, I'm not going to stand for it. You got to get your GED. I said, ah, all right, I'll get my GED. But I'm having so much fun. I don't care how much fun you're having. And making money. I'm playing music, ma. I'm playing six nights a week. And I'm supporting them now. <laughs> right. And what does school have for you at that point? You know what my, you're going to do. My mother was like, I don't care. I want you to get your G. How much did you say you're making? <laughs> my, my, my father was like, ah, Viola, leave the kid alone. He's making tons of money. But and, and now I, I bought my father a car. You know, I was helping him pay the mortgage down on the house we were living in. Pretty funny. Pretty funny. Oh, that's great. I mean, that's man. all. Like, you, especially in a kid, like you started, you started, you knew at ten, you started at thirteen. Yeah. When you see that in a kid now, it's like, har like harbor that and yes. go with it. Positive. Like my, my nephew, I could tell he's got it, but he's just not into playing the drums. But he right. sits on there. He took lessons. He's got it. He's got rhythm. Push. But it's not push. It's it's hard to like. He's not like what well, you you got you come home you came right. home and you grabbed your guitar. You got to be passionate. Yeah, he it's doesn't run upstairs passionate. to the drums. Yeah, see that's and that's, I'm like ah, that's a dip, that's a little bit of a difference. And you see that in a kid, you know, like this kid's into this. This right. is real. It's got to be a passion. Yeah, yeah, like you know, like anything else, any, anybody else who who makes it in, in life, what they've ever, uh, you know, started out to to get into. You gotta be passionate. I hear that. I really do. <laughs> I don't want to skip too far ahead. So if I do, stop me. But when yeah. when does the pull? To the Jersey Shore happen, right? Because you're playing North Jersey clubs, you're okay, playing so, colleges. So, so, uh, you ever play William Patterson uh, College? Oh, yeah. That's where I went to college. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah my yeah, dad played, played there, there too. A few times. <laughs> a few times. Um, so here, uh, these guys are working already because, like I said, they were 20 and 21 years old for, for a, a good year and a half. So they're starting to come on the scene as a, as a, a, a top 40 band. And 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 play able to play parties and get paid decent, you know, at, at this point. And here I am, sixteen. I'm like, 
How much are we making? <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay, cool. I'll I'll be there. Don't just pick me up. <laughs> yeah, because I can't you drive. Know, you know, he'll make sure he studies. <laughs> you know, my mother's at the door as I'm leaving. Right. Anyway, uh, so so uh, what were we saying now? Like uh, the, the the draw, six, your the draw, draw Jersey, Jersey. Like yeah. this, why why the sixty two year old thing, man? I will tell you. So, I mean, was it so, happening on the shore? So so yeah. So. Like I said to you, you could work seven nights a week, literally. So one of the places, one of the guys in the band came across from another band, I think. Uh, you got to check this place out in Belmar called DJs. And, <laughs> Which and, is still there. Still, and, yeah. and it's still there. Yeah. And now they own it. Yeah. The oh, bass player and the oh, drummer. Oh, really? Yeah, Kip the, and... Uh, Kip and Frank. Yeah. Now they own it. So uh, we, we, we start working this place and... Uh, the, the guy who owns it's Italian guy from Kearney, New Jersey. And he was, you know, a little bit... Uh, you involved. Know, involved, you know. <laughs> I, so we thought, and, and I'm pretty sure maybe, you know, he was or not. But in any case, uh, we're working for the guy. And his place was really doing well. But it was a, a seasonal thing. It right. Only, on the, for people that don't know, it's right on the ocean. It's, it's yeah. you know, uh, uh, June, July, August. And that's it. You know, he'd shut down. And, uh, I mean, it was a seasonal joint, but he was killing it. He had a lot of the, the top bands at that time coming in and out of his place. We talked him into being the house band at the place. Because after he, he saw how well we did when we, we came in in the first couple of weeks or so, uh, all right, maybe you guys can play the summer. Well, we don't want to just play there a Friday or a Saturday. Why don't we do Wednesdays, Friday night, Saturday matinee, Saturday night, and then Sunday matinee? Nice. <laughs> Talk them into we, a full time job. We don't have to work anywhere else. <laughs> we did. That's, That's great. awesome. Under the same same band name. The home. Yeah, yeah. I'm 16. I'm walking down Ocean Avenue to work with my Les Paul in my hand, marching down. Uh, Ocean Avenue from 4th to 18th Avenue, where it is, yeah, and uh, jumping on stage and going to work, and I never look back. Is now, anybody from home still still playing? Yeah. Yes, the bass player and the drummer are still playing. The guitar player, one of the guitar players, Harry, is still doing it. Um, they're the three original guys. The other guys up there are, are guys from different bands here and there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, as I'm not on the road... And I'm not working uh, on a Monday night in the summer. Yeah, because they do. Uh, yeah, they do Monday nights. It's Monday nights. They're still the there. Yeah, dude. They're still. Yeah. Wait, home is so, still the house they, band of DJs. They play the Belmar uh, Seafood Festival every year too. They're I did the, not. Know, yeah. That's they, crazy. They they put it down for a long, long time. You know, a good fifteen years. Mm. And I, I, you know, we're hanging out one day, and they're they're getting ready to rehearse to do some party that they were asked to do. Put the band back together, and they call me up. I said, why don't you just put a band back together and play? So what, you're 60. <laughs> still yes, play. You're not, you can still play. Have fun with it. And they, they got a Monday night back up and running, and it's, it's their most crowded night of the week. Mm. It's funny. I mean, they're, they're, they're a, a New York disco kind of club in the last 15 years. Well, yeah, yeah, they're, uh, they're yeah. Pretty, I, a lot of my friends work there. And On stuff, a Friday and, and a Saturday. It's crazy. And Sunday. It gets crazy. It's nuts. There, right? Yeah. I never, I've never gone. I've it's, never seen yeah, it. It's, you know, it's like, yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 all yeah, that. Yeah. Just go. Happy hour's not bad, but I get out of there. If, yeah. If I'm, I get out of there by yeah. like eight. But I mean, if you're, <laughs> if you're a guy, you know, looking for a girl and a girl looking for a guy, apparently it's the place to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, it is indeed. It, it, it's a hookup and, uh, and it's a lot of fun, apparently. Although these guys are, are rock and rollers at the get go, and and for them to to put a Monday night back together in the, in the place now that they own that we used to that where we literally started playing when we were kids uh, is is it's like a weird dream. Yeah, it's a weird. Yeah. It's crazy too. My mom is sixty five, and she got denied going to DJs with a fake ID <laughs> what? when she. Oh, back then. Back then. Yeah. Okay. How crazy is yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah. So that's how long this place has been around. Oh my God, it, it, it was so crazy. Oh, I can't, I can't tell you half the stories. So, <laughs> so home, so home is successful uh, for all these years of DJs. So, 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 no, they put it down. They, they didn't play for 15, 18 years. Okay, and then in the last ten, where I kind of helped them 
talk them back Kinda into bring it. it. Back. You know, so when when you leave home, when you leave the band after they put it down, I, wh- where did where did you go did from I there? Do? Like, what was your first? I don't want to say big I, break because you were already making it. I left home uh, and I went with Cats. Now, Cats were another top forty band on the Jersey Shore, and the the Stone Pony was our base, our home base. Um, when did the Stone Pony, in your recollection, become the spot for mu- the music bed of? In, in, in nineteen eighty one. We were playing Sunday nights at the Stone Pony. We had a Wednesday night in 1980, and we'd play some Fridays and Saturdays there. Uh, 1979, you know, we were just starting to play the place. But by 1981, we were the kind of kings of the, of the joint. The Under what? what cats, band? cats oh, on cats? smooth service. Okay, yeah. yeah. So 81, uh, my friend grew some string wiener. Uh, String Wiener. That's uh, a great Bruce name. Bruce Springsteen. I, I thought maybe you'd get that. And oh. I wouldn't have to explain it. Totally. <laughs> so Bruce from String Wiener comes around, and he loves the band. He's constantly coming around on a Sunday night. Tons of girls, tons of fun. He's just recorded uh, Born in the U.S. No. Born to Run? It was it had to be. No, it was Born in the U.S.A. 1981. Yeah. So it was after, so he was on the map already. Mm-hmm. You know, he had been on the map already. He was doing pretty good at that point. But because it's where he lives, his hometown, blah, 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 blah. Cool band, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, maybe these guys wouldn't mind if I come up with them every Sunday. And it was almost every Sunday in the summer of 1981 that he was coming up. And it was a lot of fun. So uh, did, you, did you approach him, or how does that, he, how does that go down? <laughs> We're talking about Bruce Springsteen here. Yeah, yeah in case anyone listening is, was unsure. Gr- gruesome string wiener. Gruesome string wiener. So, so if I call him that randomly, if I ever see him, will he understand? He'll laugh. <laughs> you know what? His sense of humor is weird, though. He may not. He'll just look at you like... I'll be like, I'm from Neptune. Come on, man, relax. <laughs> 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 so we play a set. It was like two and three sets or something on a Sunday night. Two or three sets, a 45 minute set, take a half hour break, 45 minute set, have a break, and an hour set at the end. In any case, uh, on one of the breaks, you know, everybody's clamoring because he's in the the audience saying, Bruce, Bruce is here, he's hanging out. And I'd never met him, you know. He comes up, how you doing? I said, I'm all right, I'm all right. I said, you're Bruce, right? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I'm Bobby. I, he says, you mind if I come up and play a couple of songs? I said, you know what? Maybe next week. I know I didn't. No, say. <laughs> on, I, say, I didn't. That would have been awesome. I, I didn't. Wouldn't have been, that would have been great. Been great. You know what? <laughs> you know, maybe we should get together and rehearse a little bit before. <laughs> hey, buddy, even, I'm born in the USA too. I don't <laughs> even know. I don't even know what you do. So come on. I said, of course, of course, come on up. And the room was unbelievably and automatically electrified. Mm. Everybody clamored up to the stage and it was it was electric. It was like electricity in the Yeah, you just feel it. It was pretty it was pretty cool. It was a lot of fun. And we were young. I mean, when I look at those pictures, I'm thinking to myself, "Oh my god, that really happened." <laughs> That really happened. If you, you only knew the, the, the I look like you guys back then. <laughs> well, like know? Derek, I'm uh, I'm like know, in between that time and now. For clean you. <laughs> cut rock and rollers, you know. I wasn't that clean cut, but you know, it, it, I was young. I was young. It was it was it was a good thing. Do you remember what he came up? Do you remember what he played the first time? Um, with yeah, he, he he we we moved up to playing the the uh, Mitch Ryder. And the Detroit Wheels medley, which was big on the radio up till that time for years, you know, probably 15 years easy. Uh, 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 Devil with the blue dress and all that okay. stuff. But but that wasn't what he played at first. He, he came up, what did he do? Because his career was starting to take off really big at that yeah. point. Mm. It was right before uh, Born in the USA. Mm-hmm. Right before Born in the USA. And he was big yeah. already. But he, he was like really hitting it big at this yeah. point. Mainstream. Mainstream. And uh, he, he, there was a, a, a ZZ Top song that, that he, he picked to, to jam with us. And it's a pretty simple song called Nationwide. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he wanted, that's what he was trying to say. I'm bad. Oh, nice. And I'm nationwide. nationwide. Who cares, Bruce? Have some fun. Play uh, <laughs> Twist and Shout. And we did Twist and Shout. So they were a couple of the first songs. Uh, uh, what else? Under the Boardwalk was in there somehow. 
uh, uh, Richie Valens, who, who made uh, La Bamba, La Bamba yeah. really big, had a couple of other songs, and one of them was uh, Come On, Let's Go. And uh, we mm -hmm. didn't know it. But we, we didn't know the song, but it was so simple. It goes like this, and if, just follow me. <laughs> that, right. That's got to be great, yeah. man. You're live. So, he jumps up there, and you ju just jam. Just boom. You know, here, here, try these three chords. It's... You know, I'll watch me. I'll tell you where to stop. I'll tell you where to, to start going again, and and we did it. And it was like, this is this is cool. This is yeah. a taste of uh, playing with a big guy. You yeah, know, playing with a pro. He's he's no you know bullshit. I mean? He knows he knows what he's doing. You right? know, and the funny part about that is when when you see a, a guy like that, even just walk into the room and hanging out in the dressing room, let alone coming up on the stage they're so focused, you know, and so into what they are doing. That moment. And But no, as far as music is concerned, mm. that moment and music, you know, yeah. and that's what he is, you know. Yeah. And, and you think to yourself, God, he, he's really, he's, he's not a serious guy that he, he can't joke around with, but he's serious about who he is. Sure. He's serious yeah. about, it. and and all of us took something from that, you know. If if we want to get out of this joint and make it onto playing records and and me, maybe be in a touring band at some point or another, you gotta you gotta take it. You gotta you gotta believe in who you are mm -hmm. and really sell sell who you are. Sure, you know, at, at, at every waking hour, you know, and and. It's something that we took from him. It was, a, it was a fun thing to realize. Can you, like he, I'm sure he, uh, Bruce, commands the room, right? Uh, like a born leader. Like Big that, time. Big I mean, time. that's something that's just innate though, right? Like you're Positively. born with Positively. Positively. But, you know, it was, he had the, the, the deck stacked, you know. He, he'd been around for a few years. His career was doing great. He's from that t area. Mm -hmm. So when people hear that he's in the room, everybody's running to the phone booth. To this day. T right? Till this day, right. And, and cell phones weren't around back then, so they're running <laughs> the phone boots. And by the time he, he's, he got through playing maybe two or three songs, the place was more than, it was filled twice as many people as yeah, when right. we first started playing, the, you know, 15 minutes before. It was funny. And does that, does that give you like an immediate, like, I want to use the term street credibility. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it does. So like it the does. next time you're there, you automatically have... The, 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 you know, the, he must like these guys, and, and he doesn't go up with anybody else. Although he was going up a little bit with this guy and that guy. Now this turned into almost every Sunday, the oh, summer wow. of 81. And uh, people would ask him, are you coming back next week? And he would never, ever say yes. If he was or not. Yeah. Right, or if he was <laughs> or not. And we'd even go, you know, what do you think uh, next week? I don't know, Bobby. We'll see what happens. <laughs> And, and he, he wouldn't want to. He wouldn't want to do that because he didn't want it to be like about the, him, right? The Bruce Springsteen show on Sunday sure, night. Sure. It was our band. It was our time. Yeah. You know what I mean, and he was that thoughtful in, in that regard. Uh, um, but uh, you know, he knew that his his notoriety was pretty big, and he didn't want a a, a slew of, of of people coming in. For, for for nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know, when he could charge people <laughs> to pay, you know, to see him play. So he was smart. He he, he played it pretty much uh, like that. You know, I'm not sure exactly when I'm coming around again. But And we were around at a lot of different places in the area. We were playing a place down in Brielle. He'd pop in there every now and then. Hey, Bobby, how you doing? Hey, Bruce, how you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you still play with Bruce He's, every now and then, you, right? You sound like me. I said, yeah, I'm only teasing you. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't laugh, right? Stone Cold Killer. <laughs> Shooting just, blue steel. He just, he, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> so when did, when did uh, he Stone ask Cold you to kind of jump on the road? Um, I'd never been on the road with Bruce. I mean, all it was was him coming out and, and jumping up with this local. Uh, the first time he, he said anything to me at all about the road was uh, right before the rising, the, the the album, the rising. And I knew his wife. In fact, his wife was coming up to play with us on Sundays with Cats on a Smooth Surface, and that's where they met. Oh, okay, they met at the Stone Pony. Uh, 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 what was the question again? <laughs> when, like when did when did he? Uh... What did you put in this? <laughs> it's that PBR glass, this? man. Did you spike this? 
<laughs> it's actually Dennis. Ar- Dennis, stop spiking the beer. You never know what Dennis puts in those. This is a mess. Uh, when did he? Uh, when did Bruce actually like t- you know go on tour and he's so, like, hey, so so he called. Uh, uh, I get a phone call, and it was from Patty, his wife. He's still with her today, right? Yes. Or is it, okay. She plays. She's in there. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. There. She's red hair. Yeah. Yes, right. she's out on this tour. She didn't go out on a lot of the tours as their kids were were growing and and and. If somebody needed to be home with them. She had to stay home. Right. But this tour, I think she's she's doing uh, pretty much all of it. Who knows? Whatever. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I get a phone call. Hey, Bob, I don't know how busy you are, but can you help me out and give me a few lessons playing guitar? Who's asking this? His wife. His wife. Because she, at this point, is his background singer, female background singer. And soon thereafter... Susie came into the band as the violinist and background singer, girl background singer. In any case, she says, uh, I, need to, I need for you to, to chart out a good 80 to 100 songs. I was like, ay, 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 <laughs> what? She says, no, 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 I'll pay you. I said, okay. She says, uh, I, need to, I need to be able to walk up on stage and join in playing the with a band uh, and I play acoustic guitar so it's not like it's a, a main thing that's going on up there but I I at least want to look like I know what I'm doing <laughs> yeah <laughs> I said okay we could do that we could we could go through a few guitar lessons and all that stuff but she says and more than that you need to chart out 80 to 100 songs for me to 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 glance over at like tablature kind of thing, or yeah, like actually write the music. You know, there'd be a laptop stuck in a little window on the stage that's built into the stage, with the 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 chart, the song chart coming up on it, so she could get through, you know, two, ten shows, fifteen shows, and then you start to memorize it, and you don't need it anymore. Yeah, you know, but she, she wasn't a, a good enough player to to learn the songs in the time she needed to, to, to be a guitar player. Right. But he was spurring her on too. You're my wife. Yeah. If you want to be a bigger part of the band, pick up an acoustic guitar. If right. you, if you don't want to stand up there with just a tambourine. Mm. So she did. Um, and then I had to chart out the new album, the rising. So I'm sitting in a room with a notebook and. Did you read and music and all that? I don't, I don't. Mm. So I have to listen to it and get all the chord changes off the record and charted out. And uh, Bruce would pop his head in once in a while. How you doing, Bobby? I said, Bruce, you ain't paying me enough for this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, why, why, why couldn't he just, he wrote the songs, right? Why couldn't he's he He's not going to be bothered. Uh, he's not going to sit there, even though he's trying to coax his wife into playing more. But uh, God bless them. He's like, why would I do it? I could hire someone to do it. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. So when, when exactly. he writes, he's writing by playing. He's not. He's not penning it like Prince. You know. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. He he doesn't. He doesn't write music out or mm-hmm. read music either. Okay. He's just one of those guys. You know it, it, that uh, it's it's innate and and he he has to memorize what he's writing or make sure there's a tape recorder there so he could remember. And that's how you write a song. But. Um, to, to actually write his song out after it's been recorded, he wasn't going to take the time to do that. Get get Bobby in here. How long did it take you to do like one song? Doing, um, probably forty five minutes. Mm. So I was in there for two days to do twelve or thirteen songs and and have them done spot on. Right. Yeah. And, and I remember uh, Stephen Van Zant. You know. Uh, so so so, so th- <laughs> that was going to be the. The comeback tour, the the rising. So then I get a phone call. Can you come out on the road with us for the the first few weeks? I was like, well, I work with uh, Knucklehead, Southern Fried Johnny, and the Jukes of Hazard. <laughs> Southside outside. Johnny and the outside. I have a, I have a job. <laughs> oh well, is he? Are you working at such and such date? I said. I could probably swing it. But you actually have to contemplate that? You weren't like, I'm in. He's playing hardball, man. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, you know, you know, they're not going to pay me what a band member makes to come out on the road. Yeah. You know, to make sure she's learning her parts. And oh, so at this sure- point, he still wasn't asking you to play yet. He was no. just asking you to be a teacher. Oh, That's I thought you were going to be on exactly. stage playing. No, 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 no. Oh, uh, exactly. Okay. That's, that's exactly it. Anyway, uh, um, 
I did go out, and it was for two to three weeks, and uh, it was fun. It was it was fun to be part of it, but it, it wasn't fun to n- not be part of it. Not be on kind of be on the right. outside right. a little bit. I'm under the stage, and I'm looking at the computer screen go by with the with the the, the chart I wrote, yeah. and knowing that she's reading it up on the stage. And like I was going to say a second ago, little Steven even said to me, you know. <laughs> Why don't you just play it? <laughs> no, he says to me, he says, I, I found myself glancing over at it when I can't remember <laughs> that I to oh, yeah. Comfort. I mode. said, yeah, well, you know what? I need more money then if that's what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, did you ever feel like you're, you're, you're down there, you're watching that, and you're hearing the, the crowd and everything, and you're oh, like, I, you know, I could just, I could, I, I, I could just play this. Oh, I, I so wanted to be part of it. It's, yeah. it, it, it. It beat me up in that regard. Yeah. So how did, how did it happen? How soon after? Well, it never did. I never w- was on the road with Bruce. You never played with him? No, no, no. I never played in the East Street Band. Okay. He, he, he was at the, we're, we're just friends. We're, we're friends over the years like that. Um, at the Meadowlands, I'd gone up to see a show, uh, and knowing everybody, yeah, come backstage, say hello, and I'm back there, and 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 uh, come on up, come on up and play. I was like, oh, no, no, no. What do you mean, no? Come on up. <laughs> I said, all right, I'll come up. Well, he said you'll do uh, "Hungry Heart" most most of the time because it's a simple enough song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you could do any. Song. Now you know all yeah. the songs. Yeah. You're, you know, you're tapping them out for. So I got up, and and it was fun. You know, he, he mentions my name on the PA system in front of a. A, a, a stadium full of 80, people, 80,000 people. people. And, you know, I got a good response, you know. Yeah, that asshole. That's that, that's that asshole Bob Bandiera. <laughs> that asshole we see at the Stone Pony. <laughs> it, was, it was fun. That's awesome. It was fun. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was big, uh, big fun. And uh, I was just telling the story the, the other day. Um, I think it was that show. No, it was an arena show. I think it was at the Continental Arena. Continental Airlines. Yeah. Mm-hmm. After getting up, and I think at that stadium show, I, I did from small things, big things one day come, because a, a, a British rocker that I'd mentioned before, Dave Edmonds, I used to play with him. Bruce wrote that song for him. Mm-hmm. So he knew that I knew the song. And he used to come and do it with us on those Sundays. Anyway, he knew that I knew the song. That was the stadium show that I had got up and played. The, the arena show... Uh, I played Hungry Heart, um, and Heather Graham and Norton, uh, Ed Norton, Ed Norton, were backstage afterwards, and I was like, "Oh man, it's good. Glad I left my wife home. <laughs> yeah, She's like, a looker. Like I had a shot. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, so Tom Hanks was back there too, backstage. So I, it was at towards the end of the show that I had gotten up, and the show's over now. Everybody's marching back. To the what are you like in front of the stage? He just goes, Bobby, come on up. No, no, no. We, I was back there. When, oh, okay. We, we talked for a second before. Uh, and Tom Hanks goes to me, hey, you sounded pretty good up there. I said, yeah, I, I've done this once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. What, what year was this about? Fun, silly stuff. Gee, Wilkers. Uh, what year is it now? Uh, it was probably 95 or so. Oh, right around Forrest Gump, right? Didn't that come around? Yeah, right in that wheelhouse. Yeah, in, in wheelhouse. that wheelhouse, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If, you had, awesome. if you had to put those hands on that guitar and just immediately rip uh, rip through a Bruce song, what, what would just come through your fingers? <laughs> Out in the street now, baby even know all the lyrics. I don't know the words. I don't know the words either. <laughs> I just know a grunt like Bruce. I know this. You got no, you know the chorus? I gotta wait till it gets the end. Oh yeah. Well, I'm out on the street. Oh oh oh. oh. I want the way I wanna walk. That's right. Yeah yeah. When I'm out on the street. <laughs> so I walked I, the know, way I want to walk. Yeah, That's what he says. I, yeah. so. I walked the way I want to walk. Uh, great song. Uh, you know, pops into your head. You know what? Kind of remember it. You know, That's uh, the, you, there. you know where I used to work or used to play? The Cove in Seabright. Are you kidding? Yeah. You used to work there. I worked there. And you used to play. I remember what I walked cre- by. Oh, the, ki- the, the stage was right next to where the entrance of the kitchen was. Yes. And, uh, and, I the, always, and the ladies' room. 
Yeah. Yeah. I always remember. I, I love how your mind works, and I, man. I worked there before. <laughs> Wait a minute. They're not one in the same, the kitchen and the ladies room? <laughs> well done. Did you? I worked there before I was 21, so it was cool to be in there late at night seeing all these hot babes and... And uh, you'd be you'd be playing, and people would be going nuts, and I'm like carrying a tray of food. <laughs> oh man, it was um, a crazy place. But yeah, the Cove and Seabright. There was, was a fr- my brother Bart. My brother bartended there as well. His name was Jay Jason. Oh, I remember Jay. Yeah, JD Angeles. Jay, Jesus. Yeah. Gee whiz, it's been a long time. Yeah, yeah. it has it's been a long time. Um, uh, uh, another f- guy who was a friend of us all from that area. Up this guy, John Mulhern, used to work on Wall Street, but he he was. A, the crazy rich guy out of the bunch in mm. that you know if, if if there was a new toy and and the, the hummer had just come out oh i'm getting one of those cigarette boats were were, were big you know uh. i have to have one of those <laughs> i remember getting in a cigarette boat with him racing boat and and uh feeling like i had been in five rounds with uh mike tyson yeah. <laughs> after i got back this things are fast banging, way, right? uh, yeah i'm like what John, John, relax. I told you to hold on. I told you to hold on. <laughs> I said, I've got a bloody mouth. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a second from death at every second. I'm telling you, man. But he was a crazy guy. I loved him. I loved him dearly. Um, when he got his Hummer, I was playing at the Cove. And at the end of the night, he says, I got one of those Hummers. I said, You're kidding. He says, Come on, we'll go for a ride. <laughs> I said, I, I got to put my guitar away. Hold on. Put the guitar away, put it in the car, lock it up. He's in the parking lot waiting. Here it is, a uh, uh, one thirty in the morning on a Saturday night, uh, Sunday morning, and uh, I'm in the car, in in the passenger seat, and and he says, "Come come over closer to me." I said, "Okay." He's now driving around the parking lot, picking people up that are getting ready to leave after the night. You know, <laughs> he's, just, he's just gonna drive all the all the drunks. And home. now <laughs> there's yeah. like twelve people in the car. <laughs> In this Hummer, yeah. and we're driving around the parking lot. He says, "Yeah, everybody, hang on." And I'm like, "Uh, Wait, go over one of the we, logs." He probably takes it onto the do? beach, right? What are you gonna do? And sure enough, yeah. he drives it into the, the parking lot of the Trade Winds, and up to the seawall. Yeah, there's a seawall there, and we're g- trying to get over the seawall. No, in no. The Hummer. Really? Uh, that's a for that's, people that don't know. Steep. It's like a 12, 15 foot rock <laughs> jetty wall. We're yeah. trying to get over this wall, <laughs> and it's and he's you know he 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 he's obviously thinking, if I flip this thing, I'm gonna I'm gonna have like twelve people suing me. Yeah. So he's taking it really slow, and all of a sudden, lights are flashing. Oh, of Car course. Pulls it's up alongside, You're gonna get like long side, and uh, the cop didn't even get out of the car. He knew it was him, the cop. He rolls the window down on the passenger side. He says, John, yeah, it's time to go home now. Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. No more playing tonight, John. Wow. Leave that's these great. Pe- drive these people back to their car and go home, John. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's so funny. That's great. The Cove had a lot of high, you know, high roller kind of clients going oh, in there. It was right in time, Seabrett. Right. Big time. Big time. <laughs> they tipped well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. around that time, I guess, maybe even a little <laughs> earlier, Bon Jovi starts to hit the scene, right? Bon Jovi starts to hit the scene. Um, bon Jovi was a big fan of Southsides, who I, I had been in his band for, you know, a good 15, 18 years by that time. Uh, and and, and <clears throat> John had just come off the road uh, from whatever record he was Slippery working. Slippery When Wet was their first one. Right? I don't or know. It? I think it was maybe a record later. But yeah, Slippery When, when Wet was not, it was a ways from that. It was probably the record after that. I don't know what it was, but uh, it, uh, I was playing the Garden State Art Center with Southside, and John come by, and he's wearing this uh, this uh, leather cowboy hat that Will, he, Willie Nelson. This is the given first him. time you met him. This is the first first time I met him. So we hit it off talking backstage. Blah 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 blah. Uh, 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 Southside takes his leather cowboy hat that Willie Nelson had just given to him like two weeks before, and hurls it out into the audience. What? John was like, oh, oh, how oh, mad was he? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he ripped it off his head and just threw it? What a dick. Oh, what a dick. <laughs> <laughs> That's Southside. That's Southside. Southern Fried Johnny and the Jukes of Hazard. And the Jukes of Hazard. <laughs> so <clears throat> he gets past it. Ah, yeah, son of a bitch. That's Southside. What are you going to do? <clears throat> Although I did 
want to keep that hat. Willie Nelson gave it to me. Anyway, <laughs> we, we were friends. Uh, we, we had become friends. And uh, over the next year or two, uh, John was making a solo record, Destination Anywhere. And I wasn't working that much with, with South. So he calls me up. Uh, you want to come over and play on the record? I said, yeah, 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 sure. I only live 10 minutes away. I was living. I love how you're so nonchalant about all yeah, these I'll jobs. Yeah, I'll play with you, Bon Jovi. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but, well, you know, it's funny because when... You know who they are, but when when you become friends, and you're in that world, they're yeah. not that right. guy anymore. Now they're right. your friend. Yeah, it's that, so it's a different, different feel, different outlook. Sure, you know? sure. Uh, I said, yeah, 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 yeah. I was changing the oil on my car. I'll come over. So I go over, play, play on a, on a few songs and his then solo album, uh, Destination Anywhere. Uh, and we toured a little bit behind it, got out and promoted it a little bit. Um, was a great band that we had put together. Everett Bradley was in it playing percussion, who wound up playing with Bruce on this last tour as a percussion player and singer. Uh, Huey McDonald played bass, who's been with John for 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 a long, long time. Um, Sean Pelton was a drummer on Saturday Night Live, and still is. He was the drummer in this band, and Jerry Cohen was from Philadelphia, keyboard player. So it was a good band. We did the minimal touring behind that record. We were in Australia, we were in England, and we did a bunch of stuff in the States. So you've toured all over with Bon Jovi, obviously. But years later, yeah. years later, yeah. Um, so then uh, a couple of years go by, and we're friends, how you been? Pre Christmas present, dinner, have a drink, you know, has the kids, blah, 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 blah. Um, I'm trying to get you to, to come with the band, Bon Jovi. I said, oh, that'd be great. That'd be great. He says, but I got <laughs> I gotta twist some arms because, you know, they're not that enamored with another guy in the band having a split, uh, uh, another piece of the pie kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I could understand, you know, and Richie is the lead guitar player in the band. Richie Sambora. What do we case. need another guitar player for, you yeah. know? Well, because because we do, the, you know, it adds another element. Our music makes becoming, it full, right? Becoming fuller, so we do need another guitar player. Well, we've done all right so far. Yeah, yeah, whatever. So <laughs> it took <laughs> it took a year or two before uh, he, he 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 could persuade those guys. Me coming in the band was was a good thing, and uh, and I went in the band, and uh, you know, it, it it was a little rough road there, you know. Richie and, and John weren't seen eye to eye Aren't anymore. right now they're a little off terms? And they're off terms now. And Richie wanted to see things his way. John was to see things his way. And one thing led to another, and uh, Richie's not around anymore. I think John's gearing up to do uh, uh, release another record, I think, in March. Was it, wasn't Richie Sambora recently in rehab? He's wasn't been out, he? in and out a in couple a, of times. In and out, right? And right the, now he's not touring with them Over at the all. last few years, no. No. So uh, apparently he's not going to be coming back. And, uh, you know. I guess that's we'll life see. sometimes. Yeah, it's life sometimes, you know. I mean, hey, if, if Slash and, and uh, Axel get back together, I think uh, that's, at one point. See, they're, they're there again. But they, they were both out there playing. Yeah. You know, Slash didn't go out as as, uh, as uh, Guns N' Roses, although Axel did. Right. Yeah. Uh, but Slash, he had one or two bands. Along yeah, the Velvet way. Revolver. Yes. And, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Another one too. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you, you you don't stop because you're not playing together anymore. You, you do whatever the next project is. Yeah. Hopefully it hits and you, you do all right with it. If it doesn't, you just keep playing. You, you play with the, the boys in the bar. And Did you, uh, did you ever do the, that uh, acoustic solo for... Um, but, uh, I, name the songs drawn. Wanted that or a lot. Wanted. Oh yeah, yeah. I knew um, you were feeling that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah we, 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 I'm not saying do you have to do it right now. I mean, no, no, no. Have... no. I mean, you know, we we did it. <laughs> who's who's gonna sing lead? <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Ain't only the names. Oh wait, no, no, no. Only it's... the names will change every day. Seems we're wasting away. No, the drink. We hit the next part. 
Where the faces are so cold I tried all night Just to get back home I'm a cowboy On a steel horse I ride I want it So good. PBR sings again. You can't get away from it, man. Love it. That's there one of go. my favorite. One of my favorite tunes. There you go. Hands down. That's uh, awesome. Blonde anchovy. Blonde anchovy. Blonde, <laughs> you, have, you have nicknames. Is Doesn't that like a again. thing? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we were in an elevator and somebody called him that, and he looked at me. He says, "I want a better nickname than that." <laughs> so was someone serious? Like, aren't you blonde anchovy? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Somebody called him that because they were used to hearing it from me. And he, he knew it was from me. And he oh. says, I, I want a better nickname than that. I said, probably not. <laughs> Maybe Blonde not. Blonde going to stick. Maybe not this That was time. awesome. I got, I got good. I feel like I could sing better than that, but uh, that was oh, pretty good. Practice. Practice. <laughs> practice. Hey, everybody's a singer. You practice in the shower, practice in a car, you know. Oh, yeah. And then you take it up on the stage and you practice on stage. There it is. Uh, we, we have a staple on the show, a game called Top or Bottom. Do you want to play it real quick? <laughs> Kidding? <laughs> Does it involve <laughs> chicks? No, nah, it can, but this well, one actually doesn't. Is there a 62-year-old <laughs> around here? <laughs> uh, it's, uh, we've got some sexy music in the background. I don't know. You, right? you can solo over it if you feel like you need to. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a game we like to call it's played Top or Bottom. I'm going to read you two terms. You're going to tell me if these two things are in a relationship. Which one would be on the top and which one would be on the bottom? We're going to round table it. It's tailored okay. towards you. Oh. It could be subjective. It could be sexual. However you want to okay. play. Again. All right, well, you ready to go? You know where I'm going with it right off the bat. Well, hopefully not because <laughs> the first top or bottom is Bruce or Bon Jovi. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh. You cut out that first one? Oh. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm supposed to pick? Yeah, so if they're in a relationship, which one's on top? Which, and which one's, one's on top? We're which all going to chime in here. Well, you know, since John's prettier than most girls I know. Not anymore. So you did make it sexual. No, it doesn't have to. It, it could just be, it, it could be just like, who do you like better than the other? It doesn't have to be a sexual thing. Yeah, but although his hair is not as long as it used to be, I'd say he'd have to be on the bottom. Uh, all right, all right. <laughs> Derek D. Uh, I like them both, but I'm going Bon Jovi on top, uh, Bruce on the bottom. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah I am. Uh, He's the boss. He's the boss, but, you know. Uh, uh, I'm the real Bruce. boss. <laughs> you know what I mean? Trump, Bruce. Trump 16. I'm going Bruce on top. Top or bottom? Number two, an anthem or a ballad? Uh, 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 an anthem is the top. Yeah? Yeah. You, you dig the, the rock anthem? The anthem. What's your favorite rock anthem? Uh, I, you know, what's anthemic to me is is uh, is uh, 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 Bruce's... Uh, 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 Give us a little taste. The, uh, I think <laughs> I turned that off. So let's see it. Uh, uh, Born in the USA is Ra Rangers had a comb coming In Harlem late last night uh, It's uh, What's the song? Uh, uh, I know I know it I don't know the words I know I know what song you're talking about Jungle Land That's the The anthem that Okay I, That's the, my favorite <laughs> I dig it <laughs> Although Although You know John's had uh, his anthems And Billy Joel has had his yeah. I just sang Billy Joel the other night in a yeah. karaoke. I crushed it. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Nice. Crushed it. So who, what do you say, Derek? Oh, I say anthem on top, I think, as well. Ballad yeah. on bottom. Yeah. I mean, I like everyone likes a nice ballad, but anthem's like, that's a that's a big time. That's an anthem. Like in the 80s, yeah. they yeah. made they made the ba the love ballad like real popular, right? Like that was... Yes. I dug that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I love the extract song by Extreme, like... Uh, I'm the one who wants yeah, yeah, to. Yeah, That's yeah. a ballad. That's because you were in a boy band. Uh, Bob, I didn't point this out till now. Derek D was in a boy band. They were called Menergize. No. <laughs> we were called Mixed Results, and it was... Uh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Top or bottom, number three, Giant Stadium or the Stone Pony? Oh, my God. Stone Pony on top there. Oh, wow. Yeah, you'd rather play it's, the pony? Yeah, well, it's... It's, it's got... Uh, it's got roots. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's, it's more intimate. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 the Stone Pony, and you know, Giant Stadium, you get lost in the the sauce. 
<laughs> Stone Pony, <laughs> right out there, you know, hit hard, bounce off the walls, yeah, and then drive home like that. When's the last time you played there? <laughs> I was there two now, weeks right? ago. Oh, right on. Two, about two weeks ago, I had done uh, something for uh, Light of Day with a Cats on a Smooth Surface reunion. Okay. Oh, nice! So a bunch of them were up there. Same, same vibe when you go when you play in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's still yeah, it the same. Good. Yeah, like those great. if those walls could talk. That's right. That's no, right. Man. Derek D, Giant Stadium or the Stone Pony? I already know what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I a do, huge I, Giant fan, everybody. I, I, love I am a huge Giant fan. Uh, anyway, and when, I would we, love, when we play a Giant Stadium. And I would love to play. I would love to do stand up or be in a, a show or something. You know, Get uh, that boy band back together. Maybe yeah. you can play a Giant <laughs> as Stadium. As big as Giant Stadium. Um, I appreciate the in- intimacy of the Stone Pony and the history there, but I have a lot of history from when I was a kid going to Giant Stadium. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Giant Stadium on top. That of the I got to say the Stone Pony on top. I, I Giant Stadium collapsed. I wouldn't be too upset You're about a Cowboys fan. Nobody's in it, it but ah, the Giants. This is Cowboys uh, fan. A lot of people would hate you <laughs> as a Cowboys fan. Hey, when, are, you a, are you a football fan? Yeah, I used to be a, a, a bigger football fan. Quick question. When you're watching the game, yes. uh, did we win or did they win? Aha. Uh, did we win or did they win? We won. Yeah, that's oh, right. Man. Yeah, that's right, Mike. Uh, uh, bah. That's right. Like, right. When I say we are not in the Super Bowl this year, uh-huh. that's what I say. Uh-huh. Uh, top or bottom number four, Frank Sinatra or Frankie Valley? Oh, my God. You can't deny old blue eyes. <laughs> he was, old he blue was something eyes else, right? He can't deny. As good as Frankie Valley was and is. Frankie's the man. Did you ever see Sinatra live? I kicked myself in the somewhere <laughs> that I didn't, you know, I, I couldn't put it together. Some friends of mine would go here and there, and then he was gone. Mm. Yeah. Too late. Too late. Yeah, I wish wish I had. Dirty. Wish I had. Yeah, I got to put Old Blue Eyes on top. And Valley's great, but uh, that was another song I did at a karaoke the other night. I did New York, New York. Derek, DerekD.com, everybody. Crushed it. DerekD.com. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with the, uh, make it a threesome. Frank Sinatra, definitely on top. Yeah. Uh, and the last one, top or bottom, number five, singing or songwriting? Huh. That's that's a good one. Um, I'd say singing on top. Um, songwriting, even if you didn't write it, uh, you, you would want to have written it. You know, singing doesn't matter who wrote it. Right. If you could sing it and sing your Kyle Yoon's off and and get those babes to look at you, that's the way. Yeah, yeah. Song, uh, singing on top. <laughs> Same singing on top. Singing yeah, on I mean, top. S- singing the songs you wrote. Would be yeah. That's even well, better. Singing on top, though. Now, correct that's me if it. I'm wrong, and usually I am, so don't feel bad about doing <laughs> it. But songwriters are the ones who get the, the royalties. Correct. They're the ones that are making the money. Correct. So if you write a song and I sing it, make it famous, you're still making the bank on it. That's right. So I'm going to put right. songwriting on top. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand. You know? I See, I wouldn't mind making less money, but I want to be up front. You want that. the you want the immediacy of of uh, what's going to happen. Yeah, you don't want to wait until it gets into the bank account. <laughs> yes. You, what uh? What is what is the, your favorite song that you've you've written? The, my favorite song that I've written. Um, you know, I was I was toying around uh, with the song I had written for my kids as I had got been divorced, and uh, I, I wish I'd boned up on it a little more. I haven't done it in a while. Let me see ya. Just because I've gone away Remember it's okay I'll be back again To stay someday for good Sometimes when things go bad And it makes you really mad Think of me and somehow you'll get through If the sun don't shine in your world today Just because it's raining Don't lose faith At the end of your rainbow I think you'll find my love for you is a love so fine I 
love so far I love so far That's great. Oh, come on, man. That is awesome. That's only a little bit of it, but yeah, uh I wrote it for the kids. And when you play that for them, I didn't want them f- to forget me. How does that? How <laughs> many kids? Oh, yeah, come on. Two. How does uh, that make them feel? And like, they didn't when you play that for them. Uh, you know, my my son was kind of like, uh, eh, it's cool. It's not rock. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> my daughter got the whole thing though. Yeah, my daughter got the whole thing. Even back then, you know. Oh, Dad, oh. That, that song's great, and, and you have, never have to worry. You know, we'll always be there. And I told him the same thing. Nice. That's beautiful, man. How old are your thank kids you now? For, thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah, you bet. Yeah. You bet. Uh, my daughter is 38, two grandkids, Mateo, who's going to be nine in May, and Layla, who's uh, a little more than a year and a half. Oh, nice. And my son is 33, just turned 33. Oh, it's like it's like my, yeah. bro- my brother's age and my yeah, age. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, two kids, two kids. Two grandkids, life is good. The family's growing. The, 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 fl- the growing. flag is, is flying That's high, right, man. The, the bandera. bandera. That's right, bandera. Bobby, when is the, the last time you heard this sound? <laughs> oh, ho, ho. I hate that sound. <laughs> why? Why? Because every time I'd, I'd, I'd call a number and get that sound, I'd, these idiots forgot to turn their machine off because <laughs> I need to talk to somebody. Right. I'm going to strangle them next time I see them. So to you, it's a fax machine. Yes. Right. What is it now? No, well, I mean, well, it no, it's not be, anything it anymore. Be, yeah, yeah. Now it's nothing, but it could be a dial-up modem. Yeah. Uh, that's why yeah, I like yeah. to ask people, like, what? Yeah, a fax machine was what I was saying, <laughs> hearing. Um, th- we like to play this. It's called the Armchair Futurist. This show is called uh, Pizza Beer Revolution. It's just right? no instant messenger and name game. Here. It's about the revolution of our guest, which is you. So, in your, I like to ask people in your industry. Yes. The year's 2050. You're sitting back in that chair with your guitar in your lap. Yes. What does your industry look like in 2050? In 2050, I probably wouldn't be able to see. <laughs> I'd be six <laughs> feet under. <laughs> it looks like a so lot of it dirt. Look like a lot of dirt. <laughs> That's terrible. Oh well, that's my answer. <laughs> but do you think the music is always the music, though? Right? Like it's that the you songs know, that have I, played I, in history will always be right. But I would have to say this: that even now, at at at, at this point in time, twenty sixteen, uh, it's pretty sad the, the, the state of music, the music business, mm. and that there's. The, the record companies aren't there to to cultivate an artist or to realize an artist uh, and 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 run with it. Um, now it's either you got to hit record or hit the road. I mean, it's kind of been that way the whole time. But but now you have to more, do it yourself more than anything. If you don't have uh, a hit record for us, take a walk. Yeah. You know, it's all about the bass. It's like, I got to be kidding. Yeah. It's different, right? It got, it's different. And I understand that it's different. But I have to say this. In the 60s, 50s and 60s primarily, but 60s more, um, I think being there for, for, for that decade in the world of music was – a historic thing and happy to be there for that 10 years because it was truly i feel the best time for music in in the songs that people were writing in in the bands that there were the beatles and the stones uh dylan and 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 simon and garfunkel those songs made you they took you on trips yeah they took you to places mm. That you had never been, but you can see them through their lyrics. Today, it doesn't happen no. much. What do, you, what do you attribute that I'm to, sad. though? You, is it the time we live in? I mean, because you could argue that today there's know. as much turmoil in the world yeah. as there were in the yeah, 60s. Yeah, 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 yeah. But is it... Technology, probably. You think technology is I think too, it's, to made it, it's become too easy to, yeah. to, to, to have a hit record these days writing and singing about bullshit. 
Yeah. I hundred percent agree. And then it was real. It was the real deal. I want to preface this Sorry. comment by saying Sorry. I'm dating myself. No, but well, not even not but, even not to cut you off, Mike. But, but you did. Derekty.com, yeah, everybody. Derek <laughs> com. But not 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 even not even in rock and roll. Yeah. Look at the state of hip hop. Yeah. Like even in the in the in the nineties and, and I guess the late eighties, but the like now there's a hit rap song right now that all the main all it says is look at the, look at that wrist yeah. um, look at the, look at that wrist. like what so, is that uh, it doesn't mean anything well, that, it's that's stupid. that's what i was going to say was, uh, i wanted to preface it by saying i agree completely with what you're saying yeah, yeah. but on the flip side yes. do you think it's possible that we're mi- we don't, we don't understand and that's why it's different mm, i think like, you your know, parents might not have understood of course, dylan i mean of course it's, it's, it's a certain element uh, you know that you're not going to understand. Uh, k- k- kids don't want to hear what I was listening to. You're right. I didn't want to hear what my parents were listening to. Right. But undoubtedly, and undeniably, kids at this, uh, you know, as we as we speak, cannot discount. Uh, Born to Run cannot discount. Uh, any great Simon and Garfunkel song, uh, uh, Billy Joel, New York State of Mind, it's still part of their understanding and, and knowing music right. at this point, which is unbelievable. It stands the test of it time. It stands 100%. the test of time. Will Justin Bieber stand the test of time? Not at all. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> right? The thing is, too, like this, like, like I could probably make, I could make a song with this. Yeah. Like back then, it was like you play an instrument and you learn it and you make create a song. Now it's, uh, you know, it seems a little it's too easy. The technology stuff seems a little, too little, little too easy. But yeah. not only Bobby, like my family growing up in that similar in that same era, they say the same thing. They're like the '60s. You can't. Yeah. I can't describe that music. And it'll never be again. The way it that was. Yeah, it won't. I believe that unless I can feel it and see it happening in front of me, it's not. But um, to be a to be a singer back in the fifties and and sixties, you had to really be a singer. <laughs> you can't just get close to the note that you're Auto-tuner, shooting for, right? and then put it into a machine and it gets it to the pitch. Mm-hmm. It should be. You had to sing it that way. Sure. Does does it? And today it's disgusting. Does it's it bother dis- you disgusting. when somebody can do that? Say we could do that right here, right now in this basement with yes. the technology in front of us, and yep. and write a hit song, put it out on YouTube, yeah, yeah and yeah. become huge. Sure, Derek, uh, and we talk about this all the time, but he he gets annoyed, and as other do uh, other com- comedy people yeah. that we have on, yeah. that uh, when you have a YouTube, I'm not a comedy guy though. No, no, but you're a musician. But just okay. to point, just to draw comparisons, I get you, it. But you, you are kind that, of, right? you are funny. He was right? a fern. Yeah. You are funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was a little confused at first, but now I get. Yeah. You're not a stand-up one. Um, when when you have someone who just puts something out on Vine, which is like six yeah. second videos or whatever, and they become famous from that, like right. a, a comedian will will get annoyed at that at some point, right? Uh, right? Well, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, famous. does that bother you with like the way you had to come up in music? Oh, you bet it does. You bet it does. There's no work. There's no thought. There's no. It's just too. It's, it's about viral. A lot of the comedies yeah. in the edit it's, too. A lot of the comedies in the edit, right? Yeah, you know, say a line cut, but oh, that's my. It's not standing up there with a mic, working the crowd, yeah. working the crowd. Yeah, and, and that's work. That is work. You know, is it a lost art, or they're still? Kid, I hope kids not. Working the stuff. I pony? hope. I hope that kids figure it out. That that uh, th- that that point and that era in music was real, and it could stay real if they keep it alive. Right. I hope they figure it out. I really do. I agree. I can I hope. I hope and pray as well because I don't want to hear mixed results. They're energized playing. Uh, <laughs> playing I'm, I'm songs, a blues man. Hey, I'm a blues guy through it through. So I'm, I'm not, I was only in that for. <laughs> we're not talking about mixed results. <laughs> Move on. Before we end this show, Bob, and thank you yes. again so much for coming out. Yeah, you want to you want to play one last song? Sure, sure. Anything, sure, anything sure. you want to play? Uh, I, I'm doing. Should we all a, sing together again? Well, I'm doing a, a, a tribute <laughs> show. This Saturday at, at McLoon's in, uh, in, in Asbury, the Supper Club. And I've done this show at the Basie. And I've also brought it out again at to McLoon's place. But uh, uh, it's just a little plug for myself this Saturday. No, that's great. That's great. <laughs> I'm doing uh, Wednesday at the State Theater in New Brunswick. And it's a tribute to the last 30 years of my life and all the musicians I've 
played on stage with. Oh, from, that's awesome. From what? Bruce to uh, Bon Jovi to Southside, Gary Munz, Darlene Love, Dave Edmonds, Graham Parker, and some of these guys. You're probably like, who, who, who? We can get <laughs> but, uh, we can get yeah. to the tickets off your website yes. for that. And what's the website? Yes, yeah, it's BobBandiere.com. And you can get, we have links all over our website to Bobby's website, so check that out. Do you out. have a uh, and Twitter McClint's. or anything like that? Or? No, 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 no. I, I never went there because uh, as I was married, uh, although I'm divorced now, it would have gotten me in big trouble. To be <laughs> <honest>. <laughs> uh. But uh, uh, let me see. Layla, yeah. Layla. Got me on my knees, Layla. I beg you, darling, please, Layla. Darling, won't ease my worried mind? Try to give you consolation. Your old man had let you down. Like a fool, I'm still in love with you You turn my whole world upside down Layla You got me on my knees, Layla Darling, won't you ease my worried mind Yes! Bobby, thank you so much for coming out, man. I, I honestly, this is one of my come out favorite, buy a drink. My favorite episodes. Listen to you tell your story has been thank you, brother. amazing. I love hearing. Thank that you stuff. guys. Thank, thank you so thank much. You. Enough. Again, at bobbybandiera.com. Check them out. Great uh, all these tour dates coming up, and go out and check out the band. Salute. Say hi to Bobby. Salute, Derek Cheers. Dion. You want to plug anything on the way out? Uh, t- uh, YouTube.com slash Fastlane Daily. <laughs> oh, not the DerekD.com? Plug that hole in the wall. It's <laughs> leaking. It's <laughs> leaking, yeah. No, that, that's not a glory hole, though. <laughs> <laughs> Just pointing that out. At the Derek. <laughs> oh, it might be. Oh, 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 oh. Revolution.com. You can find us on the web, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram us. Give us some love, and we'll love you back. Thank you so much for listening. We'll see you on the flip side. Too late.